we live in a world that is not what God intended for us when he created us. I am amazed as a pastor who's only 53 or 4 years old, somewhere around there, I'm not sure, <laughs> actually at the moment, I think I'm 54. And I've not been a pastor for terribly, terribly long, 25, 27, 28 years. The world today is so different than it was 10 years ago. The world today is so different than it was 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Most of my week this week was spent calling, texting, and trying to visit different people within our church who are going through incredibly hard and challenging, difficult moments right now, right this very moment. I look across the, 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 the church and the congregation and I see so many different families that we love, that we care for, that we wouldn't do anything for. We would do anything. And I look at the words that are up here right now. And oh... Oh, how I long for these things for you right now. Guys, can I just ask you, can we just be very, very real for a few moments? I'm, I, I don't have a, a sermon. And you know what? The kids are up here. And you want to know what's going to happen with these kids? They're going to get real wiggly real fast. All right? But even in the midst of wiggly kids and distractions, can we honestly just be real for a few moments? Because the fact is, is if you are here today, I dare suspect that you have some real heartache and struggle and brokenness going on right now, right now in your life. I would, if I was a betting man, I, I, I would wager considerable money on this. Some of you have health things going on in your life and you don't know what it is. And you don't know what's going to happen. Some of you have financial things going on in your life and you're not so sure what's going to happen you know, come mid-January or February. Some of you have family members that you love and you care about so deeply who are, are going through health things and uncertainties and not really knowing what things are going to look like a month from now, a year from now. And down the road, some of you have broken relationships that are, that are just eating away at you and, 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 and are causing you all kinds of, of toil and grief. Some of you are dealing with anxiety. Some of you are dealing with fear. Some of you are dealing with, with anger to the point where you can be so fine one moment and you can be in, so con, in such control of yourself, but just one, two, three, Three little things happen, and next thing you know, it's just out of control, and it's just a rage. Tell me that I'm wrong. Call me a liar. Tell me that I'm not speaking the truth right now. And the thing is, is guys, I'm not talking about 10% of you. I'm not talking about 20% of you. I'm talking about, I would dare say 80, 90, 95% of you, things going on right now.
Some of you don't know, you know, what's happening with the kids. Some of you are struggling as, as, as husband and wife. Some of your kids are, are, are in school and it's like, you know, I, I don't know what's happening and, and, and I'm worried and, and things are happening and, and I want my kids so desperately to be going to this direction, but it seems more and more and more they're going to that direction. Guys, I am telling you, the Lord is a Lord of transformation. The Lord is, is, is the Lord who wants to take the brokenness in your life and make it good, well, healthy, a, 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 just a, 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 a tower of strength. I remember when our daughter Bethany was just a little girl. And, you know, most of you think Bethany's the angel and Matthew's the one who, you know, we're not so sure about. And I, I joke, of course. But I'm going to tell you, Matthew was just an angel as a little baby boy. And Bethany was just kind of the terror. You know, I remember times when Amy would wake up in the middle of the night and hear Bethany. And Amy would just start crying in bed right along with her. I'm like, it's okay, Amy. Let me go in. Because I remember when Bethany... When Bethany and Amy was in the other room, I think I was at, at the church, and, and Bethany decided, I don't want to take my nap, Mom, and thank you not for putting me in the crib. And so she decided that she's going to crawl up over. Somehow she made it, and she fell out of the crib as a little baby and broke her arm. She broke her arm. I'm like, Amy, we're going to get arrested. They're going to think we're beating the kids, Right? And the thing of it is, guys, um, the amazing thing of it is, is, yes, things happen. Things happen. Guys, it's a fallen world, and there are obstacles all over the place. All over the place. They are everywhere. Getting older, hard. Going to work today, hard. Dealing with, with, with the effects of this world hard. I mean, is there anything, honestly, anything in the world today that is not challenging? Is there anything in the world today that is not hard? Guys, they, they, they told me, and they told Amy, they said, listen, your, your daughter, Bethany, is going to be fine. In fact, she'll be more than fine. We're going to set her arm and we're going to put a cast on it. And, uh, you know, she likes drinking milk and everything. And the fact is, is her arm where it's broken, it's going to heal. And it'll actually become the strongest point in that entire arm. The, the, uh, it'll be the strongest point of that bone. Guys, do you know when you break a bone, when you break a bone and it heals and it heals correctly, and you were to break your arm again, it'll break anywhere, anywhere other than the place where it was broken before. That break becomes the strongest point. And guys, I am telling you, you know, we, we may have all kinds of stuff going on, but when we give it over to the Lord, and I mean, when we long for it and we pray for that. And guys, I know it's challenging because I want to tell you something. Life isn't easy. A isn't, doesn't always appear to be A. Sometimes it gets confusing. Sometimes, you know, deception can creep in and A can really look like A, seem like A, and whatever else. But I'm going to tell you, it is a tricky, messed up world with so much deception. And, and you've heard me tell the story. You could be the prettiest girl that ever ever walked to the face of the earth, but if, if enough people come to you and, and just kind of look at you funny and whatever else, and there's that communication, and then they're, they're communicating that you're not pretty and whatever else. Guys, I tell you the truth. It will not take long before you will doubt whether or not you really truly are pretty. It happens all the time. But not just with being pretty, with all kinds of things. Truth, 
truth can be found in one place and only one place, and that's in the Word of God through Jesus Christ. That is the only place. And I tell you, if you long for it and if you look for it more than anything else, I'm telling you, God is the, is the God of transformation, and He will take your doubt, and He will turn it into faith. He will take your stress. Who's stressed here today? Who's not stressed here today is the question, right? I mean, I have to work so hard this time of year not to go absolutely out of my mind. And I finally got to a place a few years ago where I said, I will not put my family, I will not put my daughter and my son and my wife through hell because I'm a pastor during the month of December. Seriously. And he's in that process of transforming. Am I still stressed? You know what? You better believe it. I'm still pretty stressed right now. But I'm going to tell you, my life is night and day different, night and day different than it was seven, eight, nine years ago when I was fearful that my, my kids and my wife might just up and leave during the month of December and decide to come back maybe in mid-February. Oh my. Please don't think that just because we call ourselves Christians and we call ourselves the church that we don't have this going on. It's going on today. Right now. Right now. Brokenness. Paul, the apostle, sit there and he wrote about a lot of things in his letters. 1st, 2nd Corinthians, Romans, Ephesians, Philippians, Galatians, Colossians, all of these letters, you know, that Paul wrote to the church. And you know what Paul's biggest concern was in the church? Do you know what Paul's biggest concern was in the church? Man, you guys do not this one another. There's brokenness, there's, there's strife, there's, there's anger, there's envy. I am so sick of this box. I am so weary of this box. And guys, it is Christmas time and God has so much better for us. So much better. You're not taking it with you. Sick of this box. Hate that box. And I'm going to tell you, nope. 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 No. Do you want it? Do you really want it? Because I am telling you, there was a message today that these kids brought. When I saw it yesterday, I was just out of my mind yesterday. Out of my mind about the message that the kids were bringing today. Nope, this looks a whole lot more than that. Crying out loud when, when, when this, the difference between this and this is whether a particular ball team wins or whatever else. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And some of y'all are really struggling with this. And tell me, tell me, tell me I'm wrong. Some of you don't know what's happening. You don't know what next week's going to look like. You wonder if things are going to be intact. Tell me I'm wrong. Oh, my. Where do we even begin? Guys, I'm telling you, can we just take a few moments and be real? Guys, you did an awesome job bringing the message today. Whether you knew it or not, 
And the thing is, is I, I, I hope that there are pictures and I hope that as you guys get older and these things become bigger and bigger and bigger mountains in your life, you will remember today. And you'll learn of the lessons today. Guys, do you want the good things? Do you want to exchange? Do you want to exchange? You know, we do Christmas gift exchanges. Do you want to come and, 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 and lay your thing down and, and exchange it for something really, really good? I don't care if it's health. I don't care if it's money. I don't care if it's greed. I don't care if it's pride. I don't care if it's broken relationships. I don't care whatever it is. Guys, can we, can we, can we allow Jesus, would you allow Jesus to come? And do the things for you that he just so desperately longs for you to have and to give. We're going to close uh, this morning with these words again. From the book of Psalms, chapter 71, verse 23, it simply says this. My lips will shout for what? For joy for peace, for patience, for kindness, for goodness, for gentleness, for faithfulness, for self-control. My lips will shout because I am a, a son or a daughter of the king. I will sing my praises to you. I, whom you have what? What does that word say? Delivered. Do you believe that? Do you have that faith, that hope, and that trust that what he has started today, he will bring to completion? That he will deliver you from the things that are weighing heavy, the brokenness? Do you truly believe that, 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 that he is able to do that and so much more? Amen.